Welcome to Crypto Stock Lab. So Ethereum just dropped one of its biggest updates ever. It's called Fasaka. And let me tell you, this is not just some minor software patch. We're talking about a complete reinvention of the network's entire economic model. It's designed to fix a really deep, critical flaw that was kind of quietly putting Ethereum's whole future at risk. So let's get into it and break down what this massive change really means. Right before this upgrade, you have to understand the Ethereum ecosystem was absolutely on fire. I mean, it hit a peak of nearly 33,000 transactions per second. That is... That's visa level stuff, okay? It proves the demand is just exploding, but, and this is the crazy part, all that incredible success was a total double-edged sword. It was creating this weird hidden paradox that was threatening the very thing that made it successful. And that really is the million dollar question, isn't it? As all these users, millions of them, were rushing to use these faster, cheaper solutions built on Ethereum, was all that activity somehow hollowing out the value of ETH itself? It's a super fascinating economic puzzle. And yeah, you guessed it, the Fuxavaca upgrade is the answer. Okay, so let's get right into the heart of the problem. You see, the very platforms that were helping Ethereum scale up to handle all this demand were at the same time creating this huge economic leak. You can think of it like a leak in the hull of a ship. And if it wasn't plugged, well, it could have had some really serious consequences. The sheer scale of this is kind of hard to wrap your head around. A whopping 85% of all the action in the Ethereum world is now happening on what we call Layer 2s or L2s. You know, Base, Arbitrum, Optimism. They are awesome. They make things incredibly fast and cheap for us. But all that efficiency came with a pretty big hidden price tag. And this quote right here just nails it. Here's how it worked. L2s would bundle up thousands of their transactions and then just post a tiny little summary, a blob of data, back to Ethereum. By doing this, they got to piggyback on Ethereum's incredible world-class security. It's like paying rent for security. But here's the kicker. The rent, the blob fee, was often dropping to basically zero. So you had these L2s making millions from user fees while paying almost nothing back to the network that was keeping them safe. So this set up a completely backwards system. Before Fusaka, the more popular the L2s got, the less ETH was actually getting burned. Kind of crazy, right? This meant the network was creating more new ETH than it was destroying, making the whole supply inflationary. Fusaka is designed to grab that flywheel and just flip it around. For the first time ever, the growth of later twos is now directly connected to more ETH being burned, which creates this powerful engine for making it deflationary. So how in the world did Ethereum pull this off? Well, it wasn't just one single change. It was a whole toolkit of three really powerful tech upgrades. They're called Ethereum Improvement Proposals, or EIPs, and each one is like a specialized tool designed to fix a very specific part of this broken machine. First tool out of the box, the rent collector. This one is the direct fix for that value leak we were just talking about. It basically puts in a mandatory minimum fee for those data blobs. That fee can't fall to zero anymore. So from now on, every single transaction you make on a layer two, no matter how small, is directly contributing to burning ETH and shrinking the total supply. The rent is finally getting paid. Okay, next up is what I like to call the data superhighway. This upgrade, Pier DOS, is basically like turning a congested two-lane road into a massive 16-lane autobahn. It just dramatically increases how much data L2s can post. This is the magic that unlocks the potential for over 100,000 transactions per second and could slash your L2 fees by up to 95%. And think about it. Cheaper fees means more activity. And thanks to our rent collector, more activity now means more ETH gets burned. It all works together. And finally, we've got the one that might just change everything for the average person. This EIP brings the same super secure technology that powers Face ID on your iPhone and puts it right into Ethereum. This means you'll be able to approve a transaction with just a look or your fingerprint. That terrifying 12-word Zed phrase, you know, the single biggest thing that scares people away, yeah, it's finally on its way out the door. This is a game changer. So, we've seen the problem, we've seen the really cool tech they used to fix it, but now let's get to the good part. What does all this actually mean for your wallet, for the ETH in it? Let's connect these technical upgrades to the cold, hard economic numbers. Okay, let's just look at the math here because it tells the whole story. Before Fusaka, the network was clearly inflationary. About 620,000 new ETH were being created every year, but only about 350,000 were burned. So net-net, you're adding 270,000 ETH to the supply. 
Now, look at the post-Fasaka world. The models show that the new burns from L2s alone could get rid of another half a million to 700,000 ETH per year. That completely flips the script, potentially taking almost 400,000 ETH out of circulation every single year. This is a massive, massive economic shift. And this chart just makes it crystal clear. The amount of ETH being created each year is now dwarfed by the amount of ETH projected to be burned. It's not even a contest. The best way to think about this is like crypto's own version of a stock buyback. It creates this amazing system where the more the network is used, the total supply of ETH actually goes down. That could have a really profound impact on its value over the long run. So we have this amazing new economic engine humming under the hood, but what's it actually going to feel like for you to use it? Well, the answer is simple. Effortless, even. Interacting with this stuff is going to feel as easy and as secure as unlocking your phone or using Apple Pay. You start a transaction, you look at your phone, you're approved, instantly. This is how you get the next billion people on board. All right, let's bring this all home. Fusaka is way more than just another update. This really marks the start of a completely new chapter for Ethereum. It's an era where its incredible growth and its own economic health are finally and powerfully pulling in the exact same direction. It really just boils down to this powerful trifecta of good news. One, you get radical scaling. The network is going to be faster and cheaper than ever. Two, you get deflationary economics. The more people use it, the more valuable the whole network becomes. And three, you get a user experience that's finally simple enough for your parents to use. It's a coordinated leap forward on all the most important fronts. So the big takeaway here is that this isn't just hype. This upgrade is about Ethereum finally being able to capture the value of its own incredible success. It turns all that explosive growth into digital scarcity. And with that fundamental change now locked in, the question people are asking is no longer if Ethereum can scale. The real question now is, what happens to the value of an asset that's literally designed to get scarcer the more popular it becomes?